Um, if you shortcut any of this, then you got a chance of not hitting the fire. Uh, and you know, it goes back to the old saying, you know, there's never seems to be enough time to do it right the first time, but there's always enough time to do it again. <laughs> you know, just do it right the first time, uh, and you don't have to worry about it. So. Fire also loves chaos, so it doesn't have to be a beautiful teepee. Um, so I'll normally just put my matchstick size on there, kind of aerated. And I'm gonna need a place to set my tinder bundle inside there. So I'll go ahead and leave that open. On wet ground like this, you should establish a base. Um, wet or snow covered ground, you should put a base down. Uh, as this heats, it's gonna pull moisture out of the ground. You know, and if your fire is already struggling, and you're pulling more moisture into it, evaporate more moisture up into it, it's, it could take a chance of it going out. I think we'll be all right. But I'm leaving a little pocket right here so I have a place to actually put my tinder bundle in when I'm done. All right, so I've got my matchsticks. My tinder bundle will go here. They'll transfer to the matchstick size. Then with the pencil size, and I don't need all of these, I want this especially small stuff. I can kind of put that in a TP shape around there. Now, a TP fire is designed to give it structure to get it started. Right? It doesn't have to stay. It's going to fall. Uh, so don't worry about it when it does. It's okay. Kind of aerated. You don't want to choke it out. But it's a general TP shape. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. It's a good idea when you're doing your kindling to check and make sure it's dry enough. You should hear a snap. It shouldn't bend. That's all right. So I've got that. So the heat's going to transfer to that. Then the next larger size doesn't take a lot. That's a pretty massive pile of tinder right here. That's going to be enough to get it going. And then I want to move on to my sustaining fuel. All right, that's a good kindling pile. Now from there, I can move on to my sustaining fuel with smaller stuff and start stacking it around. Obviously don't start with the big chunks, it's not gonna happen. You know, give it, give it a chance to get to that. But I can just stack those up. And then I can light my tinder bundle right here, push it under. If I have to, I can pull this a little bit so that it has structure to climb and just let it go, right? You shouldn't have to do a whole lot of blowing, a lot of craziness, right? But you may have to. Um, same concept when I'm doing a log cabin, and this is one I especially like to use when the wood is more wet and I need to give it more time to dry before it becomes part of that, that fuel source. Um, so I'll start, birch is especially good for the base. But kind of just like it sounds, you're building a log cabin from larger to smaller. And this actually will keep from collapsing as badly as uh, one of the teepees will. And if this collapses before you get it sustained, then there's a chance that it could go out and you're gonna have to add more fuel. Well, it's probably should be opposite. Anyway, my fuel is already incorporated into this leg. Uh, if I wasn't showing you this one, I would just put this on the outside of that. So I've incorporated every single bit of, of the fire that I need to incorporate. I probably should go somewhere else, but anyway. Yeah, this is an odd number. From here, I'm gonna drop matchstick size in the bottom or leaf litter or something like that, right? I'm gonna put that in the very bottom. And then from there, I'm gonna put, you know, matchsticks if I haven't gone there yet. Um, I'll take my other stuff will be on the side. I'll take my tinder bundle, light it, set it in the center, and I'll cover that with matchsticks. Let that catch. Then I'll cover that with pencil size. Let that catch. Then I'll cover that with marker size. Normally I'll build these up a little higher. Um, but what that does is that heat from inside here will dry out your fuel on the outside. And this won't collapse. It gives it time. Whereas this may collapse and not have enough time. Your outer layer can be damp fuel and it'll dry out still as long as it maintains that structure. So those two I can combine all into kind of one step, which is why I like these particular fire lays. 
Um, so with any luck, we should be able to get this one going if our tinder bundle is good. Uh, this one's kind of the same concept. Um, so I don't really need to light them both for you, but to give you an idea. Normally I build these up a little higher. Um, and like I said, both of them work well with, with wet conditions because it, the outer layer of fuel dries as this actually combusts. So same thing with the tender bundles though. It's a little damp, so this is a little small, but I've got some pretty coarse bark on the outside, some finer bark on the inside. Now, that's about a, a that's a fair weather size right there, you know. I already know this is a little damp, so I'm going to add a wet weather tinder to that, and I'll just use, you know, scrape off some fat wood, maybe even put a, a few matchstick sized curls in there to give it a little time to burn before I start. Always thinking the smallest possible form of tender to the largest and then I can scrape this and get a bunch of it going now granted my tender bundle is sitting on the wet ground right now and it's soaking up moisture on the bottom I think we'll be okay but it's generally not what you want to do I like to use about a quarter, the size of a quarter, like 25 cents a quarter um, for my fat wood. But that one stick will last a heck of a long time. That's probably plenty. Alright, so as long as I got this correct and my technique is right, I should be able to get this within three strikes. And then I'm gonna put it right inside here and get it going. All right, so I'm using the pen and pull method. I know that my sparks are gonna originate from the edge. So I just hold right there. And hopefully the aim is good. If it actually starts. Well, that'll do it. So I kind of missed, but I might still be able to get it. I missed that wood, but that's all right. I'm going to turn this over on the side, but not smother it so that the fire can climb. It should go by itself, but the um, if you have a piece of river cane, it works really well too. Anyway, so I've kind of combined all the steps here. And if the wind was going the way I wanted it to, the wind would be blowing it across and actually getting the rest of it going, but we're opposite of what we needed. But that should go without any issues in establishing tools. 